Okay, so I think everybody's there now. So uh, I'm just going to get started. Um, I'm going to start on time and hopefully do this um, in a timely manner. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kelly Warren, and I'm the chair of the psychology program at Grenfell. Um, what we're doing this afternoon uh, is we're doing a session just for students, all students, uh, coming back from um, from last year or even for first years right now to get a sense of what's happening course-wise in September. Uh, and so when all of you entered, uh, you should have been muted and we're gonna ask that you try to stay muted uh, throughout the, the session, just as you can hear right now, somebody's not muted and I'm getting a bit of feedback. Hi Kelly, uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody so then sure everyone will be muted and uh, you can unmute yourself and everyone else will be muted, okay? Perfect, sounds so I'm good. Gonna, I'm gonna mute all right now. Thanks Steve. What I'm doing this fall. Sorry, I'm gonna try that again. Gonna try that again. Sorry. Okay. So um, again, my name is Kelly Warren. I'm the chair of the psychology program. And as I just said, uh, what we're gonna do this afternoon is go through and talk a bit about the things that you can expect uh, for September. So um, this is not just for first year students or it's not just for your second or fourth year students. This is for all students so that everybody gets a sense of what to expect uh, in September. And so for those of you who've been on for a little while now, you'll already see uh, some of the small computer glitches that we're expecting um, to have uh, for the first little while at least until all of us get used uh, to the technology. And um, Hopefully, we can all work together and make this as pain-free as possible. So just to give you a sense of what we're going to cover this afternoon, um, I'm going to get each of the faculty members to introduce themselves. I forgot to check and see if Raina is there as well, so the faculty and staff will introduce themselves. Uh, then we're going to go through some discussion of remote versus online learning because a lot of students have been questioning um, the difference between the two and what they can expect. Uh, same thing with what we call synchronous versus asynchronous instruction. I'm going to go through a list of the courses that are being offered. Um, make sure that everybody's aware that you still can get academic advising. Talk a little bit about a Brightspace page that the psychology program is developing. Uh, there's a representative here from the Psych Society who's going to talk a little bit about the Psych Society. And then we'll answer any questions uh, that people have. So in terms of the questions themselves, uh, at least on my screen, as the technician was indicating to me there, everybody's screen is sort of different now. So it's difficult for me to say this is exactly how you do it. Uh, but somewhere on your screen, um, you should have this window that reads like, in my case, it's stop sharing, you won't see that, but then things like pause, share, assign, mute me, video, participants, chat. The chat box is what I want you to focus on. So preferably we would prefer that all um, individuals other than the ones I mentioned, the faculty and staff stay muted throughout. And even with us, the faculty and staff, we're gonna try to mute ourselves when we're not speaking. But if you have any questions that you want to ask uh, throughout the session, I'm gonna ask that you type them into the chat box. You can type into that chat box whenever you want. But what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, have it so that um, on that um, in that chat box near the end there, uh, Brett is going to read out the questions, and whoever the question is applicable for uh, will get some some things answered. So it may be some of us in terms of faculty and staff in the psychology program, uh, or it may be I think we have representatives here this afternoon from the uh, technology services. Uh, we have uh, representatives here from the registrar's office and from our marketing and communications program. So hopefully, uh, if you have a question, at least one of us will be able to answer that question. So again, um, I'm Kelly Warren. I'm a professor there in the, the psychology faculty, and my area of specialty is actually developmental psychology. So some of you who are taking developmental psychology in the fall will be taking a course with me. Um, and I also do a lot of work in terms of uh, forensic psychology. 
Is Pete on the line? Okay, so Pete Stewart couldn't make it this afternoon. Uh, I knew there was a possibility that that would happen. Uh, but Pete is our one of our cognitive psychologists in the program. And for those of you who are taking introductory psychology or cognitive psychology, um, you may get a chance to meet with Pete uh, this fall. Um, Jennifer Buckles. So I'll just get Jennifer to unmute herself there and introduce herself so that people can see Jennifer. Hi, everybody. Yes, I'm Jennifer. And uh, my area of specialty is clinical psychology. And so you'll see that reflected in, uh, you know, a lot of the courses that I teach, but I also have an interesting little love of history of psychology. So that's the other piece that you'll see me in. So I'm glad you could all could, you could join us today. Thanks, Jennifer. Kelly Brown. Okay, am I big and on the screen? Yes, you are. <laughs> oh. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm Kelly Brown, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I teach the psychology labs, so the research method statistics labs, and 2950. I know there's going to be a lot of questions, and I hope I'm able to answer them today. It's going to be bumpy. No doubt it's going to be bumpy, but together we'll muddle through and we'll be fine. Um, I also teach the sexual behavior course, and right now it says TBA, but uh, I've had a couple of students email me and ask me if I am teaching it, and yes, I will be. So hopefully um, everything will go half decently smoothly this fall. Thanks, Kelly. Um, bedroom, Merck. Here we are. Can you, can you hear me? Oh, Sandra's cutting in. Okay, Sandra, okay. go for Oh, sorry. I guess I heard the wrong wrong person. No worries. Okay. Um, I'm Sandra Wright, and uh, I guess my main area is uh, animal behavior, and that kind of spills over into areas like animal learning and into uh, neuroscience. So uh, I'm going to be teaching uh, contemporary issues in um, in learning, which is going to be animal cognition. So you'll find that most things I do have something to do with animals. So that's kind of kind of where I land. Thanks, Sandra. Mark? All right. Uh, so my name is Mark McFedrin. Uh, my area generally is in cognitive psychology, uh, but I more specialize in uh, studying language processes. So I'm in an area that you call psycholinguistics. Uh, I will be teaching Psych 1000 uh, this upcoming fall term, as well as the introduction to cognitive psychology and one of the seminars. And in the winter term, I will be teaching uh, Psych 1000 again. And for those of you who are taking 3950, the statistics course, I will be teaching that as well. I look forward to seeing whoever uh, is taking those courses then. Thanks, Mark. Brett? So I'm Brett Hofelt. I teach courses in social, developmental, and forensic psychology primarily, as well as intro. Um, and much of my research intersects areas of social and developmental psychology primarily, um, while also looking at um, how technology interacts with each. Thanks, Brett. Um, I'm assuming Daniel Nodolny is going to be actually on sabbatical uh, this coming year, so I'm assuming Daniel's not on here, so I'm not purposefully uh, leaving Dan Daniel out. Is Raina on, on this session? Hi. There we go. Go for it, Raina. Hi, I'm Raina. Uh, I'm the Instructional Assistant for Psychology, uh, so I help with all the stats classes and labs. And I also help um, honor students put their um, questionnaires online if need be. Thanks, Rena. And then last but not least, Sonia. Is Sonia there? Okay, have I unmuted myself? 
You've unmuted yourself. <laughs> okay. So thank you to everybody for joining us today. I don't know if you had to go through a little bit of uh, uh, interesting routes to get here like I did. <clears throat> so I'm Sonia Corbin Dwyer. I'm actually a former student of Grenfell Campus, like some of my colleagues. Uh, it had a different name way back then. I've been a professor for 22 years, and this is the most interesting, I think the most challenging, and I guess exciting time of my entire teaching career. Uh, my areas are counseling and educational psychology, and this fall I'm teaching three courses, and we'll be talking about those later on, um, providing I can get myself unmuted. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I purposely left Sonia for last because Sonia's going to talk to us a little bit about the whole online versus distance and some of the, the goods and the bads that we can expect uh, for the fall. Um, so I'll turn it back to Sonia. And now I found the button, so I'm good to go. All right. Um, I think we can all agree that this uh, pandemic is not providing any of us with the ideal circumstances for teaching and learning. As I mentioned, uh, it's a challenging time for me, and I'm sure it is for most of you. There have been and will continue to be many bumps along the road, as Kelly Brown said. Um, there will be confusion, there will be frustration, and there will be many questions. Therefore, the fall semester will require of all of us a lot of flexibility, a lot of patience, and certainly a lot of humor. Uh, it will also require, though, the development of new skills or the honing of skills that we already have, which, though, I think can be strengths. So it's going to require a lot of communication on both of our parts. We will try to be explicit and clear as your instructors, but without feedback that we might typically see in the classroom, such as your furrowed brows or blank stares, which indicate um, understanding or a lack thereof, we're depending on you to reach out to us, particularly when you have questions or concerns. Uh, we'll be using virtual office hours, chat features, and other tools. And of course, there's always our grateful email and office phone numbers. So please don't wait too long to ask questions if things aren't clear or something is not going right for you regarding technology or anything else. Uh, it could also, um, of course, be dependent on what we do. So for example, uh, last semester I recorded um, my narration of my PowerPoint slides for a class, but it turned out that partway through the chapter, it stopped recording my voice. But I didn't know that. I just posted them, and about a week and a half later, somebody got in touch and said, do you know that you, you stopped talking sort of midway through? And unfortunately, that was uh, too late for the other students who had already completed uh, the assessment portion for that. So not only do we want to hear from you, we need to hear from you, all right, because we have no other way of knowing these things, um, typically. So also, so while we want you to reach out to us, also reach out to each other, your classmates, your peers. It's important you stay in touch uh, since many of you will be isolated from other students and you are great resources for one another. All right, you're great support for one another. So make sure that you um, do that, reach out. So as a proponent of positive psychology, I have to point out that I think we will not only survive this uh, fall semester, but we will thrive. Um, there was an author who wrote earlier this year, Daniel M. Menahor, I think. He said, this, pandem this pandemic offers us a great opportunity to move from our comfort zone to the growth zone. This is the time to acquire new skills and learn how to deal with challenges. So while we will encounter new obstacles, we will learn new approaches that will us in the future. I'm learning things about technology I never knew existed, and I already plan to incorporate some of those features in my teaching approach when we go back to the classroom. I suspect you will pick up on things um, about technology that you will incorporate into your learning when we go back to the classroom. So again, we at Grenfell are here to help you through this. 
You just have to ask. So I wanted to um, mention as well a little bit about the difference between remote versus online delivery. Because at the beginning of this, I didn't know the difference. I thought when people were saying, no, it's not online, it's remote. And I was like, what's the difference? I don't, I don't understand. So um, certainly there's a you know, few things in common, such as uh, the platforms that both can use. And as Kelly Warren already mentioned, we're going to be using Brightspace. And so some of you might have had experience uh, with that from uh, previous courses. I had a little bit of experience with it, but certainly learning more. Um, to access Brightspace, if you have never um, used it before, you log in using your MUN login information, and you click the appropriate course. You can actually try it out today. Um, there's an orientation, Brightspace Shell, that you can access. Um, it's on the uh, website, on the My Rental uh, Experience website, the, click, the link for that. So if you have any issues regarding technology, uh, get in touch with the Center for Innovation in Teaching and Learning, known as CITL, C-I-T-L, or ITS at Grenfell. Um, CITL has a webpage, citl.mun.ca, and you can certainly find out a lot more there. So there's good resources there. So speaking of good resources, um, they have been offering, CITL has been offering some sessions for us as uh, instructors. And I attended one with Allison McNeil. And she explained the differences between teaching online courses versus teaching um, remote delivery courses. So I'm telling you what I learned from her. So online courses, she explained, have been planned and developed over time you know, 12, 18 months, maybe even longer that they have been uh, developed. There's a team approach to development over these, um, of these courses, including faculty, online teaching specialists, instructional designers, information technology experts. The course is fully developed and ready to go at the beginning of the semester. Professors choose to teach this way and students choose to learn this way. And Memorial University has a list of online courses that they regularly offer online. Remote delivery of courses, which is what we're doing in the fall, is done in response to an emergency. It's a rapid and temporary shift in delivery. Right? So we use those, the same remote solutions often. Um, but it is a significant disruption for everybody, so not only for students but also for faculty. Uh, faculty get individual support as needed, so there's not the same team to design the course. Students aren't given the choice of taking the courses this way, and therefore you may not be quite ready for remote teaching, or learning, I'm sorry. Development of the course content is ongoing through the fall because there's limited planning time since delivery is done to adapt to a crisis, and of course in our case, the pandemic. Therefore, the design of the course may be more simple than online courses and may be less than perfect. Let me just emphasize that, less than perfect. <laughs> uh, but please know that we are doing our best. So remote learning courses may or may not use uh, the assigned class time uh, or faculty may not always utilize the scheduled times. And so I believe Jennifer is going to talk a little bit about this next. And I hope you could all hear me clearly because my rabbit was having a good old drink over there <laughs> in his cage. <laughs> my dehumidifier kicked in. It was all good. Anyway, so thanks again for joining us. And if you have any questions, Lisa, please, um, as Brett said, put them in the, in the chat feature. Thanks. Thanks, Sonia. And... I think also that was a great example of the ways in which our um, lives also have to have a lot of flexibility in terms of this. You're not used to, for those of you who have had Sonia as an instructor, you're not used to hearing that her rabbit is drinking while she's <laughs> teaching and the dehumidifier is cutting in and all those sorts of things. So 
in ter- that just picking up on that idea of flexibility that uh, Sonia was mentioning, uh, it it requires flexibility of all of us in so many different ways, and including our sort of typical boundaries that we have about our workspace and our home space, and and so you know we're very uh, mindful and sensitive to that as well for you because we know you'll be working in your home space um, in a, in ways that you haven't had to before. And so to sort of move into that conversation, um, I want to talk a little bit about synchronous versus asynchronous instruction. And so, because uh, these are probably maybe new words to you as well, you may be familiar with it, but for those of you who aren't, it is an important um, concept that we want to look at because your courses can have various um, ways in which these different components can be used. And so when we're talking about synchronous, we're talking about um, sort of live sessions where we come together very much, you know, in a, in a similar setting like the one we're doing today. And we are interacting with each other uh, live at the same time uh, using some, you know, virtual platform. And there are certain ones that the university sort of has endorsed and is providing and will provide support for. So those will be sort of more likely the ones that we will use. And so, you know, the lecture may occur synchronous, which we're all on together and sharing information. There may be discussions synchronous. There may be expectations about you participating uh, in a synchronous way as well. And so it's, very much this idea of we're together on a platform live at the same time and interacting. Asynchronous um, means we're not here together at the same time. So what that means is uh, information will be posted or there may be expectations around participating in uh, discussions on a discussion board or um, using group tools and these sorts of things. And that would be happening sort of more on your own time, separate um, when you want to access that information. So it doesn't require that we all come together like we are doing today at one o'clock on a Monday um, and for a specific period of time. And so your courses may be delivered in a synchronous format uh, where the expectation is, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, one o'clock, we're all here and we're doing the course. Um, they may be delivered in an asynchronous format, which means there won't be the expectation of a particular meeting time online. Uh, the information will be posted and there will be um, activities and learning activities uh, that will occur, but that happens sort of on your own time and you can access that information um, on your own schedule when you want to. And then there may be a combination of synchronous and asynchronous, where certain aspects of the course will be synchronous in that we will come together um, in this form of, a, you know, in this platform. Um, and there may also be information posted that you can access on your own time. So to give you an example of asynchronous, uh, sort of, you know, tying into what Sonia was talking about um, for the end of her winter term when she talked about narrating PowerPoint slides. So narrating PowerPoint slides and posting uh, those narrated slides, that would be an example of asynchronous, that you can access that information at any time and, and listen to that information and look at that information. Um, another example would be a pre-recorded lecture where the whole lecture is pre-recorded. Um, again, it can be used in various formats and posted in a video format. That could be asynchronous too. And then you can see the overlap where if we were doing a session like this and we recorded it and then posted it, it there would be the synchronous and the asynchronous component. So I think that's the most anybody has ever said synchronous and asynchronous in a five minute span. <laughs> so I'm going to stop saying it now. Um, but that's a little bit about the difference there. So if you're hearing your prof say there will be a synchronous component, it means you have to be there at that time. We all have to come together online. Uh, if it's all asynchronous, that aspect won't be there. So that's, uh, and, and, you know, your profs will guide you through this process. Um, you know, don't feel like you have to know all this. This will be clearly stated. The expectations in each course will be stated, and each course will be different. You know, in a senior seminar course, 
the expectations may be different than in intro course, right? So um, we'll very much be providing you lots of information and uh, guiding you through that whole process in terms of what the, what the expectations are for that. So if you have any questions, feel free to post it in the chat box and then Brett will be uh, reading those out for us after. To go through uh, a list of the courses that we're offering at Grenfell this fall. And so this is courses specific to psychology. Uh, and I want to emphasize that these are the Grenfell courses and the Grenfell course numbers. So what you will see, for example, is that when you uh, go on to the registration system, um, you may have, for example, the St. John's courses come up. I had an email earlier today about taking psychology uh, 2910 in the fall, which is a St. John statistics course that's similar but not the same as our psychology 2925. We are going to recommend uh, and in fact uh, strongly recommend that you take the Grenfell version of particular courses. And the reason for that uh, is that if you take the St. John's version of a course, it may not have the same material. So psychology 2910 versus psychology 2925, for example, you're going to see different material. Now, to the best of my knowledge, you cannot take 2910 because you have to be accepted into the psychology program on the St. John's campus in order for that to happen. Um, but there's gonna be other psychology courses that you can take. And so for example, what we commonly see is students taking online courses such as psychology 2010, 2020, uh, and these are uh, St. John's courses that are what we call course restricted uh, with Grenfell courses. And I mentioned those two specifically, and I hope I got the numbers right, because what you'll see happen is that they're course restricted, meaning that you often can't take, the, they don't count as, you can't double take the courses. But that doesn't mean that you can't take them both. But also we have to look at course equivalencies, which is something that students often miss out on. And so if you take 2010 and 2020, for example, and you're a Grenfell psychology major, they're both considered uh, in terms of course equivalencies the same as 2025. So you're not gonna get credit for 2010, 2025, and 2020 um, in terms of looking at, oh, I'm doing all of these courses towards my degree. And that's why it's really important uh, for you to book appointments with your academic advisor, which I'll get into uh, later on in the session. But on campus this semester, so Grenfell courses we will be doing uh, in the fall, Psychology 1000 and 1001. Uh, the survey courses, so those are our 2000 level courses that general students have to take four of and honor students have to take all six of. We'll be offering 2025, which is developmental psychology, 2125, which is social psychology, 2425, which is cognition, and 2625, which is personality. We're also offering four what we call our contemporary issues courses. We're doing the second research methods course, two fourth year courses, so 4910, which is the history or systems in psychology, which all uh, fourth year students should be taking, and 4925, which is the seminar course, which um, there's three sections of, which we'll get into later as I go through here. Um, and we're offering an elective in psychology, psychology 3533, which is sexual behavior. And keep in mind that the students who have been accepted for the honors program also need to register for uh, psychology 4951. Now, what you're gonna find uh, as you start trying to prepare is that these things are gonna work differently this year. That's not coming as a surprise to anyone right now. And so one of the first differences that you need to be aware of is the fact that textbooks cannot be easily purchased through the bookstore. There is some discussion of possible uh, curbside pickup, but there's no guarantee on that. And so what we're gonna try to do, I've got a list uh, as we go through here today of most of the textbooks that will be required for September. And we're asking that you keep in mind that you may want to get your hands on them earlier than you would in the past. And I know that may be a problem for, for some students, which is unfortunate, but because the bookstore is not gonna have those textbooks, you're gonna be responsible for getting them yourself. And so with that in mind, um, the easiest thing to do in terms of getting your textbooks is to uh, go through either the publisher of a specific textbook 
or you can pur purchase textbooks through retail sites such as Amazon. And so then it's up to you if you want a print um, version of a textbook or uh, if you want to buy the ebook uh, of a textbook. Uh, ebooks are, are cheaper, um, but as I'm going to get into, what you're going to find is that with ebooks, uh, you, you're basically renting them for a short time period in some cases. And so it may be that you want to make sure that you have the textbook uh, rented for a sufficient time period. Uh, I've also been talking to the Psych Society, and Anna's going to mention this later, but um, from talking to the Psych Society, what we know right now is that um, it's not going to necessarily be easy to get your hands on secondhand books this year, uh, not as easy as it was in the past. But the Psych Society is going to try to put something together so that you can actually uh, work on, um, so that you can work on ways of getting textbooks, whether you mail them to each other or you can somehow pick them up from each other and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the list of courses. I think we're going to do this pretty quickly, uh, but I'm going to actually post this list in a reader-friendly format on the Psychology webpage uh, sometime over the next week, so that you can figure out the textbooks uh, for yourself. So I'm doing this by course. My screen is not letting me click to the next, my computer's not letting me click to the next screen here. But I'm doing this by course, and um, you'll see here that we've got some purchasing options. So first of all, Psychology 1000 and 1001, which is your introductory psychology courses, we will all be using the same textbook, which is Wheaton and McCann's Psychology Themes and Variations, the fifth Canadian edition, uh, which has been used uh, at least this past year. And so what that means is that you may be able to um, purchase some secondhand copies of that textbook. Um, but if you want to purchase it um, in print format and you can't get your hands on a secondhand textbook, you can purchase it from the Nelson webpage, nelsongreen.com, and it is available on Amazon as well. It is somewhat cheaper on Amazon. I note, and I mentioned this a few seconds ago, that with the ebook purchase, if you go on to nelsonbrain.com, it allows you to rent it for a certain number of days. And so if you have students who are doing Psychology 1000 in the fall and will then be doing Psychology 1001 in the winter, Please be careful because what's going to happen is that if you only rent it for a short period of time, all of a sudden in January, you're going to need that exact same textbook and you may need to purchase it a second time. So obviously, uh, you want to avoid that. You can rent it for uh, longer periods of time. I don't know if Brett or Mark wants to hit, add anything else here about IntraPsych. No, that's good. Okay. So uh, Psychology 2025, as I say, is a survey of developmental psychology, which I will be teaching in the fall. Um, and that one, again, this is a textbook that was used last year. It's uh, Schaefer et al.'s Developmental Psychology, Infancy and Childhood, the fifth Canadian edition. Again, that can be purchased on the Nelson webpage, and it can also be purchased uh, on the Amazon, on Amazon.com or on Amazon.ca. And it is somewhat cheaper uh, at Amazon than it is at the Nelson page. So what I'm going to do then now is as I go forward, I'm going to get the people who are actually teaching the courses to I'll put up the information on the screen, but if you could uh, read through it. So I'll be teaching the Survey of Social Psych course in the fall. Um, the textbook and link are listed there. Um, as Kelly mentioned, and that's going to be similar to many of the courses, um, there are different options you have of choosing a textbook uh, with different price options as well. If you prefer hard copy, that's always available. It's usually a little more pricey um, versus the ebook. Um, and you'll see some differences in price in terms of publisher or third party sellers as well. So you have a chance to explore some of the options, some of your financial options at least, um, and doing so well in advance before the semester, which could be beneficial. I suppose that's me, right? Yes, it is. All right, well, I'll be teaching survey of cognitive psychology. 
Uh, the textbook is listed here, so it's, it'll be Sinek, Sinet, Smilek, and Kingstone, 2016 Cognition 6th edition. I've uh, uh, posted the link that you can purchase it at. Uh, in the meantime, this is just a hard copy of it. If there are any ebooks available, uh, ebook versions of this available, I will be looking at that and trying to consult with the publisher for that. So if you are, uh, if I do find any information, I will also make that publicly, make that available for the class uh, as well. So that's my piece on that. Mark. Having trouble unmuting. Um, Psychology 2625, Survey of Personality. Uh, the textbook has been used for a while. Um, so there are used copies out there. So hopefully you'll be able to, if that's your uh, choice, uh, you'll be able to find a used one sort of amongst uh, yourselves. And it is available as an ebook. Uh, from vitalsource.com, and then it's en um, slash or hyphen ca. So there's been there's a number of um, textbooks on that particular site. That was the site that was um, provided to me from the publisher when I asked about ebooks. Uh, so you can check out that site for other textbooks as well. Now the book is for a psychology book, it's getting a little bit dated, so I'm not sure. I expect a new edition to be out soon, but as far as I know, that's um, that's the most recent. Thanks. Okay, um, so as I mentioned, Pete is not here, uh, but uh, I think Kelly is gonna briefly uh, talk about the labs here now. And the textbook that you'll see is the one that was used in 2925 this past winter. Uh, so for those of you who took 2925 this past winter, you should have that textbook. Uh, for students who are just coming in from 29, from 2050 or from the St. John's campus, uh, who are uh, students who have done some other, of course it's considered equivalent to 2925, this is the textbook that you will need. Yeah. Can you hear me? You're good. Okay. So this is the textbook. And as Kelly said, that's the one that we used in 2925 and we used it 2950. Uh, we've used it for a number of years. So there, for anyone coming into 2950 who didn't do our 2925, I'm sure you can pick up a secondhand copy somewhere. Um, you want me to talk about the labs now, Kelly? Sure, go for it. Okay. So this is what my plan is. With, uh, hopefully it'll work. Um, again, there's going to be bumps. My plan is to teach from my office. Um, my plan is to um, have, have you as students remote in the SPSS. That's my plan. Um, obviously, everything will be sent to me electronically, so your data files, your output files. In terms of teaching, what I plan to do, hopefully simulate the lab. So I'm going to be live. I'm going to do synchronous, so Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. We will have labs. I will go live. I will put up the data file. I will put up output files for you. And just like I do in the lab, I'm hoping to have a smart podium that I will have um, installed on my monitor at my office. And I will do all kinds of illustrations, just like I did in 2925. Hopefully that's the way it's gonna work. Um, I'm gonna record it as well as much as I don't like to, but I know I should. So I'm going to record it um, and then you can play it back. Again, I'm going to be available. I'm going to do office hours, uh, live office hours. You can get me through email. And then of course, we'll be doing APA stuff as well. We'll be doing more stuff with lab reports. There were a couple of in-class assignments, um, discussions that we did usually do in 2950. Not sure how they're going to run yet. I'm still trying to wrap my head around um, delivery more so than content right now. Again, you're more than welcome to email me. I can give you as much information as I have right now. And I guess that's it for me. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks. You're welcome. I guess that's me. Um, this is actually much shorter than the story out, out as because it was way too small in terms of print for the slide. 
But as you can see, the uh, textbook at the bottom, I've used it before, uh, probably a couple of years ago. So I don't know if you'd find a used copy around or not. But it is available from the publisher in the printer ebook. And I checked on Amazon, it's there as well. So just the, um, again, the topic itself is cog uh, comparative cognition, which is looking at these complex processes in, in various species. So, so again, you can get the book either to the publisher or through Amazon. That's me. Oh, I got right on that time. How exciting. Uh, so, yes, psychology, 3226, contemporary issues in the psychology of education. So basically, it's an educational psychology um, intro course. And this is a new edition of the textbook that I have used in the past. Um, these are Canadian authors, um, all three. And so... Um, Students often ask me, can they use the previous edition? And I always say, of course, it's up to you, but I don't do a comparison to see, you know, what the changes are. Sometimes the publisher will highlight what some of the changes are. Uh, so I leave that up to students. So with regard to getting a used copy, it would be the previous edition. So it is available as an ebook, and again on that vitalsource.com, make sure it's E-N, I guess for English, uh, hyphen C-A, so it's the Canadian um, Vital Source site. And so um, at least for an ebook, that would be um, readily available, but the, I'm sure you can get the print as well, just not used. Thanks. You again. Me again. <laughs> Psychology 3625, Contemporary Issues in Personality. So what I focus on in uh, this course um, is stress, health, and well-being. It is uh, an older text, uh, 2013. There hasn't been an updated edition, um, but I do like how the text is laid out. So any sort of new, you know, kind of recent things I will be bringing in, um, you know, to uh, the class, if you will. So again, it's been used in the past. There should be used copies uh, just at Brentful alone, but it is available as an e-book, um, again, from that vital source um, website. So uh, if you have any questions about um, sort of, you know, what stress, health, and well-being, but I think it's fairly uh, self-explanatory, but feel free to get in touch. Thanks. Okay, so Abnormal Psychology, the textbook uh, has been previously used, so you'll be able to find used copies if you'd like to have a used copy. Um, you can also purchase it from the uh, publisher or from the same uh, source that many of us are, are talking about with Vital Source. So it's up to you which one you want to go through. Um, it's, it's available as paper text or an e-text, so whatever you know your preference would be. In terms of a previous edition, I um, do not recommend at all that you go with a previous edition because DSM change, that's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, uh, had a significant change in its last revision. And this text reflects those, um, those revisions. And so you really do need the sixth edition. And if you have any questions uh, about that, feel free to contact me. Me again. Um, Psychology 3533, Sexual Behavior. Uh, there's a new textbook. And I actually have it, not that you really want to see it, I suppose, but that's a new textbook. I only got it about three weeks ago. It's the 14th edition. Uh, if you want to use the 13th edition, feel free. I try to tell you the changes. Like Sonia, I don't do a direct comparison, but I do notice some as I go through. 
so you're more than welcome to do that one. It's available as an ebook. Um, thanks, Asanya. Um, tell me about the vital source. Available as an ebook. For, I think it's $74.95. I'm not 100% sure, which is substantially uh, cheaper than if you had to buy the hard copy. Although you think you want the hard copy because everyone wants to keep sex, sex text, right? Thanks. Did you want to mention that at all, Jennifer? Yeah, so I'm also teaching 4910, Systems of Psychology, or a lot of people refer to it as History of Psychology. Um, having a little issue with that text, so I can't commit to that right at the moment. So the text will be announced soon, and um, as soon as I have that information, I will pass it on to Kelly, and she can get it up on the website with the other information. And I'll also contact uh, students who are registered in the course to let you know about what that uh, what that text will be. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, when it comes to our senior seminar in psychology, there's actually three offerings of the course this semester. And so um, usually we get students who are like, how do I pick uh, a seminar in psychology? And unfortunately, sometimes people do things like pick it based on time. Uh, the reality is that there's three different instructors who are interested in three different areas in psychology. And so ideally what you want to do is you want to sign up for the section that best matches your interest in psychology. And this is particularly interesting important, I should say, for um, students who might be interested in going uh, into certain areas of psychology. And so if you're interested in cognition, for example, maybe you want to try to get into a cognition seminar. Now, that's not always possible because we are limited instructor-wise, but we do give you three possibilities. And so try to pick uh, the one that best matches what it is that you're doing. So there's three sections. I'm going to get the three instructors. I don't know what order I have them in right now, but get them to talk a little bit about what they're doing, um, and I'll go on from there. Okay, so uh, I'm teaching uh, one section of seminar, uh, 061, and um, the overall theme of that section will be exploring issues in clinical psychology. So that's a very broad theme, um, meant to be broad, so that you can explore your own interests within that theme. And so, uh, you know, we often take uh, a little bit of a controversy approach in the sense that we look at controversies in the field and we look at issues because it, it gives us um, something to sort of, um, you know, get really engaged in to, to look at the various sides of, uh, of a particular perspective and the various positions. And so we'll really be working with the applied literature and the research literature. Uh, there's no assigned text in this seminar section, but there will be a series of readings and other materials provided throughout the term um, by me and also by uh, the students in the seminar, because it's very much a collaborative learning experience. Okay, I guess that's me again. Uh, I keep... Um, I'll keep on wanting to mention that the way my room is lit up here, I'm usually in the dark until about the evening. So uh, you should be able to see my face for the seminar. You probably won't in the uh, 3225 uh, in the morning. But the area I'm looking at is something called conservation psychology. And this is relatively new compared to other areas of psychology. And the real thing it tries to do is hit those two bullet points. It's looking at how humans care about and value nature with the goal of creating harmonious relationships in an environmental ethic. And the other thing is how humans behave toward nature with a goal of creating durable individual and collective behavior change. It's, it basically builds itself as not as really a field into and of itself. It brings in all fields of psychology that try to basically move toward obtaining those two goals. So if you're interested in development, you're interested in psychotherapy, if you're interested in um, learning, um, if you're interested in education, it basically draws on as much as it can from psychology to basically move toward those two goals. So again, you can see the textbook there. It's a little introductory textbook. 
and again available from the publisher in Amazon. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. All right, that's me. So I'm teaching the third section of the seminar. Uh, and the topic that I generally cover is cognitive psychology, but I specifically focus on language, memory, and uh, conceptual development in my seminar. So I primarily focus on, like I said, psycholinguistics, the scientific study of the psychological and neurobiological underpinnings of the acquisition and production of language. So within the seminar, students will generally uh, have a lot of readings that relate to different theories of language acquisition and uh, uh, theories of language processing. But I additionally discuss a lot of research questions related to memory, and some of them are a little bit more applied. So, for example, in some seminars, we might talk about uh, eyewitness testimony and instances of uh, why false memories occur. Uh, we also talk about uh, issues like how knowledge is represented in the brain. So we, we go into things like semantic memory. And there also, this also includes a couple of debates on some hot button uh, research topics uh, within the area of cognitive psychology. So, uh, for example, one of the topics that I like to cover uh, is whether exposure to music really enhances cognitive development. Uh, so in terms of the textbook, like Jennifer, I don't really have a textbook. It's really only assigned readings. So I will have uh, a reading list for any students uh, that are interested in taking the seminar. Uh, and in some instances, in fact, a number of instances, uh, the students will be responsible for developing their own reading and bringing that and sharing it with the seminar. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for, uh, for that uh, for that section. Thank you. Uh, so again, the other um, course that uh, I want to mention is the Psychology 4951. Uh, so students, the honors students have been or should have been um, received an email right now from your potential supervisor, or sorry, not your potential supervisor, your supervisor for the fall. Um, and so please reach out to that person and he or she will be able to help you uh, in terms of topics. And Sonia gave us this wonderful uh, little image here um, showing that really, you know, uh, right now things have uh, completely changed from what it was that we were uh, expecting, but we have to uh, go with it. So as uh, we were going through here, a couple of things sort of popped up that I want to uh, mention. Um, so Grenfell email versus Mon email. Um, everybody has a Grenfell or should have a Grenfell email address and you're going to have a Mon email address. For online logins like your Brightspace page, um, you are going to need to know your Mon login information. Uh, but if you're contacting your professors, you might want to ask them what email address they prefer. Um, personally, I don't check the Brightspace email, and honestly, last week was the first time I ever checked my Mon email, which is why I had like 2,500 emails there that hadn't been addressed. And for the students who had uh, emailed me and didn't get a response from my Mon email address, you know why now, um, because I don't check my Mon email. So make sure that you make that distinction and you're using the appropriate login information, the appropriate email addresses to contact people. And I know people complain and they'll say, why is it that we have all these email addresses and all these different usernames and so on? We did not choose this either. We hate it as much as you do, but it's something that we have to cope with. Uh, Brightspace, hopefully you'll learn or you have learned how to access it, but if you have trouble, uh, please reach out and ask us. But if you're having issues in terms of technology, the reality is many of us aren't gonna be able to help you. I'd be completely lost. And so you should be reaching out to either to the ITL or to the ITS program at Grenfell. Um, the Grenfell versus MUN courses thing I mentioned, uh, but this is where it becomes really important for you to talk to your academic advisor. So we typically ask that students contact their academic advisor a week or two before they register for your courses in each uh, semester. And that person can go through the program with you and uh, ensure that you're taking courses that actually uh, allow you to complete your program in a timely manner. And so something that's as simple as taking both 2010 and 2020, 2010 and 2020, and then only getting credit for 2025, 
um, can put you behind in some respect. And so we want to make sure that you're talking to your advisor and you're doing the courses that you want to do. Uh, so one change that I will mention already uh, is for those of you who looked at the site last week uh, to figure out what courses you were registering for this um, coming fall, Cognition has been moved. So Cognition is not being offered right now when it was being offered before. It's in the GO6 slot right now. And so this is where we like to have our students uh, book appointments with uh, a psychology faculty member uh, because we're the ones that are going to know the changes uh, most readily that are occurring in our psychology program. As some of you already know, there's likely going to be a change about the 3950 requirement that's going to be in place by September. And so we would know that other advisors likely would not or may not. So anyone who did not have an advisor should have received an email from me uh, last week saying, um, I don't think you have a psychology advisor. Please get in touch to, with me to figure out um, an advisor for the upcoming semesters. If you don't, respond to that. And for those of you who have an advisor uh, and don't know, same thing. Email me. I have the list here. I can tell you who your psychology advisor is. Um, and I'm going to send out a list to the faculty uh, of the updated advisees soon within the next day or two so that um, we can know we have to get appointments made or we can make appointments with the students who um, we are advising so that we can make sure you're on track for the fall. Um, what we're hoping to do, um, Jennifer mentioned, for example, the textbook um, in 4910 right now. Uh, typically, we've got, you know, the dem room, we've got people who are uh, posting up notices all the time in terms of changes in psychology and whatnot. And obviously, that's not going to be as easy as it has been in the past. So our plan, and I was actually talking to CITL about this today, is that we're going to have a Brightspace page specific to psychology. So when you sign into your Brightspace account, you should see that page. Uh, and that will have all, any updated information uh, in psychology. So I'll try to send out emails, but as well, you'll be able to sign onto that page and, for example, scholarships, awards, uh, things that are happening in terms of events and so on, you can get um, from that Brightspace page. And so in September, if you can't access that page, please get in contact with me and I will make sure that we get that updated. The other thing is that with the current changes, the Psych Society has to change from its past format. The reality is, of course, we can't have in-person meetings right now. And so I'm going to actually ask Anna Dahlman to talk a little bit about the Psych Society, uh, and then we'll open the floor to questions. Oh, can you hear me, Kelly? Yes, I can. Okay. Hi, everybody. So a lot of you probably know me from around campus. My name is Anna. I was on the executive team for the 2019-2020 school year. So earlier this week, me, Renee Duffy, who's our former president, and Abby Morales, who is our former secretary, we met with Kelly to talk about what's going to happen with Psych Society, and I was the one available to meet with everyone today. So for anybody who's not uh, familiar with who we are, we are a group that's committed to promoting psychology to students, as well as raising money for different organizations, both around Cornerbrook and around the province. So in the past, we raised money for things just like the Autism Society, CMHI, and for events such as Amanda's Journey. She was a student at Grenfell, raised some money for her. So obviously because of COVID, we can't really be doing fundraisers and going to give money to people. So we are taking a bit of a shift this year in terms of what we're going to be focusing on. So due to COVID-19, we're going to be more focused on keeping students connected with one another, mentoring students who are seeking help, providing a bridge between students and professors, and hosting online events to keep students together, to keep everyone connected, and to help each other out during this really hard time. Because I know for myself, with uh, the social distancing, it can be really hard sometimes when you miss your friends. So we want to be here for you guys when you feel like you need a friend. So right now, some changes we're thinking we're going to be seeing. So our former president, Renee, she's been in contact with Kirk Wiseman at the GCSU. And we heard back from him like very, uh, very soon before this meeting occurred. And he is saying that they are going to be ratifying some societies. We're not sure what that entails yet, but as we have updates, we'll keep you guys posted on our different social media pages, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So yeah, we are going to keep everybody on the same page. When we know things, you guys will know, the profs will know, everyone's going to be kept together on that. 
So right now we are talking to Dr. Kelly Warren and we're exploring a number of possibilities of things you can do online. We're looking at developing a form like Kelly mentioned earlier for buying and selling textbooks for students in the psychology area. And we're also looking at the idea of maybe creating a virtual dem room. So for anybody who's not familiar with what the dem room was, it was a room that was owned by the psychology department that students could come in and they could do their work there or socialize, take a little break. There was lots of events that happened in there, psych society, different talks, with different guest speakers. So we wanna look at maybe making some kind of online room to get as close as we can to that as possible while still being apart. So in terms of some events, we're definitely gonna be open to hearing everyone's ideas. We are gonna be needing some for sure because we have to get really creative this semester. So we're gonna have some kind of entry form. You can send us some ideas and that kind of thing. Right now, we're considering doing some online scavenger hunts, mentorship activities, online board games. We're still gonna to try to have our meet and greet. And like I said, there's gonna be some open discussion for everybody to put in their ideas of what we can do. So we're gonna be putting up a lot of self-care tips and positive messages and study tips on both of our Facebook and Instagram pages to keep everybody motivated during this tricky time. So our Facebook page is called Grenville Campus Psychology Society. And our Instagram account is GC underscore Psych Society. So those pages, I think most of our exec members are on them. So if you message it, somebody from there will get back to you. So right now, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask at the end, or you can contact myself, Renee Duffy, or Abby Morales. All of our contact information is provided on the Psych Society page it's on Grenville. Or you can, like I said, you can message our Facebook, you can message our Instagram, somebody will get back to you for sure. You, if you also have questions, I'm sure your profs will be more than happy to find it for you or get in contact with one of us. And yeah, once we know a bit more about how things are going to run, we'll definitely be sure to keep everybody updated. Thanks, Anna. So um, I got in contact with Anna and Abby and Renee last week as they're the three remaining members uh, of the executive from last year that were left. Typically, uh, what would happen is that there would have been an election uh, in March. So I, I just mentioned that because for the students who are thinking, okay, um, I wanted to be a part of the psych society. Uh, I didn't realize there were elections. Um, there haven't been. And so as Anna mentioned, uh, Renee got in touch with Kirk for us. Uh, and Kirk got back to us earlier today to say that we're not quite sure how societies are going to run. But regardless of whether there's an executive uh, or not, uh, Anna and Renee and uh, Abby have all agreed to at least get things started uh, so that hopefully we can put something together so that students can talk to each other. So I think that's everything that I have to say. Uh, so unless there's something that somebody else in the psych program has to say, I'm gonna turn things over to Brett. I know uh, some people may have to take off, that's okay. Uh, but we're gonna answer uh, some questions if there's been questions posted there in the chat forum. So Brett, are there questions? Uh, it looks like Brett's disappeared. Okay, um, so Stats Labs, hopefully um, you can uh, get a better sense from what Kelly had to say earlier. Uh, if you have more questions, I ask that you reach out to Kelly and hopefully uh, she can answer any questions that you might have. Again, there's gonna be hiccups, uh, particularly with the remote system but we'll try to get things figured out uh, as we're moving along. Um, Shauna Matthews has got her contact information in there and the telephone number for the registrar's office. So for those of you who don't know, uh, the registrar's office phone number is 637-6298. Uh, so again, 637-6298. And as of um today until july 31st that office will be manned so that um, student questions can be answered so you can call the registrar's office and it might take a little while but somebody will pick up and be able to answer uh, your question uh in terms of examinations uh that's something that you know when tanya was talking about this idea of do we really know what's happening right now it's, it's a work in progress and so different people may have exams in different formats, but you will know far enough in advance that you can make educated uh, decisions about courses. 
So a lot of it will likely be similar to the way that exams were last semester uh, with take homes, or they will be timed exams that are invigilated or not invigilated. Again, it's gonna depend on the course uh, by the um, CITL staff on the St. John's campus. Did anybody else want to answer or ask and say anything else about exams right now? Okay, I'm just gonna keep scrolling down here now. Uh, for people- uh, I could speak yes, just for sir. a second about the exams. Yeah, sure. Um, as you said, you know, many of us are still sort of figuring out um, the content, but we're sort of focusing on maybe the process first, the evaluation. Mm -hmm. So certainly if you have any questions, like for specific courses, if you're trying to decide and you wanna know, like if that's, um, you know, something that might help you decide about which course to take. I think you can contact the instructors um, individually about the uh, evaluation components. I think that would be uh, probably uh, fair to do. Yeah, for sure. Anyone else? Okay, uh, people who need note takers, um, the, what's the name of the office? Someone help. Um, Brad. Brad. Learning Center, ACES? ACES? ACES, okay. So uh, Brad has been sending out um, emails from ACES. Um, he is still working, same as always. And so if you have questions about accommodations, the best thing to do is to get in contact with Brad. And Brad will be able to contact us or get things put in place so that we make sure that um, you get the accommodations that you, you need the same as if you were in the classroom. Uh, some features in, um, I think it's a bright space, maybe in the meetings, online meetings, which is, this is WebEx, but there's an online meeting that would do the same thing in bright space. I believe there's like a closed captioning um, feature that then when recorded, if the professor, you know, records uh, their session, then that would um, come up. And then I think you might be able to get a transcript of that too. So there are different sort of features that technology can provide that might be, um, uh, you know, sort of conducive to that. But again, as you said, Brad Elliott would know more about that and to contact him. And uh, will scholarships still be open in the fall? To the best of our knowledge, scholarships are going ahead the same as they always have. Um, the due dates are listed there on the web page in terms of um, when they're due. Uh, and again, that's something that I'll make sure is posted there on the Psychology Brightspace page. But, um, you know, obviously everything submission-wise this year is gonna have to be online. Uh, if anything changes, I'll make sure that everybody knows. But the I think the dates listed are still the dates for 2020, or sorry, 20, fall of 2019, uh, winter of 2020, but it will be somewhere around those same times. So I'll get that updated before September. Any other questions? Okay, so if anybody has any other questions, again, feel free to uh, reach out uh, to myself or to any of the, the psych faculty or staff, um, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, and as information gets updated, uh, I'll make sure that I uh, have it posted on the web page. So it may not look like it. I know there's a couple of problems there with dates, but the information on the psych web page is up to date. So all the course descriptions are there, the courses that are being offered in the fall are there. Uh, and so you should be able to get information uh, from that web page. If anything um, isn't on the web page or something looks like it's out of date, if you have questions, let me know and I'll, I'll look into that. Otherwise, unless anybody um, has anything else to add. Oh. Anybody want to say something? Okay, unless anybody has anything to add, uh, I guess we'll be talking to everybody in September. Uh, this is a year when you definitely don't want to miss those first few classes, I would say, uh, because that's where you're probably gonna find out the most information. But even if you do, 
uh, things will likely be recorded or you can get in touch uh, with your individual professors. So any anything else? Okay, so see y'all soon.